Hey, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a positive and happy match review of Chelsea's 2-1 win in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge against Aston Villa. JT in the opposition dugout, Tammy Abraham taking on his old team or the team he was on loan at last season, scoring a goal and not celebrating. Chelsea going from conceding zero fouls last time out, which Frank Lampard was not happy with, to conceding 18 and getting well stuck in, including a couple of very professional fouls. Both goals and both assists were made in Cobham and Chelsea's academy. And although Chelsea should have tucked this game away a bit more and made it more convincing considering the amount of chances they had, all in all, a very, very good win, especially considering Tottenham drop points against Manchester United, who looked like they were sort of charging up Chelsea's behind. So we're gonna be chatting about all that kind of stuff today and getting into it. Lovely scene indeed. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel. Hit the bell notifications icon if you want to help me out, which you should want to help me out. Please do like the video and remember if you like FIFA 20 go subscribe to Yan Plays, my other channel. The link is in the top of the description. Right then. So of course Chelsea go into this game after a loss. A really frustrating loss to West Ham at home. I went to the game last night at Villa and I, although I was kind of confident Chelsea should win, especially in the sense of bouncing back, but I don't know man, I felt like Chelsea were entering this weird sort of phase or could have entered this weird phase of like a sort of drop of mentality where they might have gone through a difficult patch and Aston Villa generally are no mugs. They got good players across the board and of course Jack Grealish had that superb performance away at Old Trafford, but really Mason Mount showed him who was boss in this game. Just as Southgate's going, oh, should I be picking Grealish over Mason Mount? Uh, uh, oh, oh, wow, no, definitely not. <laughs> I'm only playing Grealish is an absolutely superb player, but it was nice to see Mason have a superb game. And really, he's very, very important to the way Chelsea plays, and I've maintained this. We'll get more into this in a minute, but I've always maintained how, sure, Tammy's great, sure, Mason's great, but really, they're great together. They've been playing together since they were six years old and you, the chemistry's evident. So, Chelsea needed a win coming into this game, especially at home. All the narrative aside, they just needed to get their heads down and do the biz. Obviously, I was at the game, so I can't take meticulous notes and run you through the general main talking points of the game, but what I will do is talk about the general vibe of the game. So, let's do that and let's pull up the analysis screen. All right, as per usual, I'm referencing the Who Scored Match Center graphic for statistical evidence. That sounds a bit too serious. Reference. As predicted, and as I said in previous videos, Tammy Abraham did indeed return to the lineup. Try and keep him away generally, but when he's playing against Aston Villa, the team that he helps get promoted, he'll obviously want to go and flex his muscles, especially at Stamford Bridge. So Tammy does start, and as predicted as well, Pulisic, and Willian are on the flanks. And as predicted again, yes, I'm amazing. I'd Mason Mount in the 10, and I said Jorginho will be dropped for Kovacic and Kante. And boy, was I right. I was also right in assuming as Peel's on the left back and Reese James was in the right back position, but one thing I was wrong about is I did think Zuma and Tomori would continue their partnership, but Christensen comes in for Tomori and Kepa remains in goal. We made a couple of good saves. He's in better form now. We will talk about player performances generally, but let's talk about the game a little little bit more. Aston Villa lined up with a 4-3-3, really it's a 4-5-1 out of possession. They did look to try and break on Chelsea, but they did also try and do a lot of build-up play. Throughout the majority of this game, Chelsea were dominating. They were very, very frustrating in many ways, Chelsea, because they had so many shots. Uh, nine shots on target, they probably should have had more on target, and really they probably should have tested Heaton better. Actually, Heaton made one or two proper top-class saves in this game. John McGinn looked threatening, but nothing really too pokey. Grealish had moments when he was on the ball when he looked good but the crowd were giving him a bit of banter and getting on his back so maybe that got inside his head a little bit and I think he got frustrated because there was a bit where he lost the ball, he fell over, he fouled Willian, you could tell he was getting a bit heated. Trezeguet obviously got his goal to equalise it up but generally 
it was Chelsea's game to lose. They should have scored more goals. The goal they conceded was a really scrappy goal. I mean, to be honest, the build-up play towards the goal was good, but the way it just sort of came into Trezeguet's body and fell off his leg and, I don't know, probably still should be doing better Chelsea. But Chelsea scored two goals, which saw them over the line and got them the win. The first goal was lovely. It was a Rhys James lob over the top to land on Tammy's head that he glances it in. Lovely finish indeed. It's good to see him scoring really nice headers like that. Out of respect for the fans, he scored it right in front of the Villa fans. He didn't celebrate. Obviously, he had an amazing season with them last year. He scored like the most amount of goals a centre forward has scored for Villa in like 50 years or something. They were singing his name as well. He was really well received by the Villa fans. I think though Villa do ban to Chelsea and Chelsea give some back, there is a sort of peculiar respect there because obviously they've got John Terry and they had Tammy Abraham. You know, really there's got to be some form of relationship there because of that, maybe. Anyway, lovely goal by Tammy Abraham to open up the scoring. When Chelsea concede late in the second half, Tammy's the first person to cheerleader on the halfway line trying to gear up his teammates. And to be fair, Chelsea come out in the second half and they look much, much better. In the second half, Chelsea do score the winner. Tammy Abraham wins the ball in the box on his chest, chests it down to Mason Mount, who sort of volleys it straight on and puts it in the top of the net. Really good finish, really nice assist from Tammy. And this kind of thing is testament to what I've been saying about their relationship and chemistry playing together. It was great to see Mason Mount score another goal and get his scoring boots back on, but again, although he's got that great combinational play with Tammy offensively, he is so important to the way Chelsea play in terms of pressing from the front, pressing from the midfield. I was right next to the pitch and I was watching certain players for a lot of the game off the ball. He never stopped running, dude. 90 minutes. I know he's a kid, he's like 19 or whatever or 20 and you're supposed to have it bundles of energy. I can't remember, I, think, I don't think I did when I was 20. And then again, I wasn't a professional footballer, still. And Chelsea see out the game with a couple of little wobbly moments towards the end. Hey, it wouldn't be Chelsea if there wasn't any sweaty moments at the end of the game with just a one goal difference lead. And they get the win and they get a really vital three points to see them look a little bit more comfortable in that top four spot. I want to talk about certain player performances in this game um, and give some people some praise. So let's get rid of the analysis screen. All right then, obviously everyone involved with the goals did really, really well. Reese James had really, really good stats and metrics this game. I actually tweeted out on the Football Therapy account and he got his assist. Mason Mount was very good. Tammy Abraham was very good with his goal and assist. Kovacic was superb. Ball carrier did a professional foul when he needed to do, which Frank Lampard would have liked. Carried the ball very, very well. Kante wasn't amazing. I know a lot of people were praising him, but I was watching him again a lot off the ball. He wasn't up to his usual standards. He was okay, but when Kante's not very good, it's noticeable. Maybe just my opinion, but that's what I felt. As P pretty decent, he did demonstrate some of his 1v1 defending, which is very good in the left back position. Again, he's not a very offensive left back, but that's okay. Chelsea need to be better defensively, and when you've got Reese James bombing on the right flank, you can kind of like deal with it. Zuma wasn't the best in this game. He had a couple of shaky, erratic moments where he just whacks the ball and clears it peculiarly, where really he's just got time and space to pass in. Not awful, but a little bit concerning, and he was probably, out of the two centre-backs, the more notice noticeably poor one, I guess. Christensen was pretty good. Again, they weren't massively tested, the centre-backs, in this game, even though they, Chelsea, as a team, made it hard for themselves by not putting Villa away properly. But again, while Lampard is chopping and changing his centre-backs, it's going to be difficult. And also, we've got to wait until Rudiger's back to properly have a look at centre-back partnerships. So yeah, like I said, the midfield, Kovacic, very good. Kante, all right. Mount, very, very good. William, pretty good. He nearly scored for free kick, and I think he forced another really excellent save from Heaton. William had a pretty good game. He won loads and loads of corners, as he does, because he plays right on the flank, doesn't he? He gets chalk on his boots, unlike Pulisic, who comes inside. So, William had a pretty good game. Obviously, Tammy was excellent. In terms of getting a goal and an assist, that's all you can really ask from your centre forwards. Now, Pulisic, for me, was really good. Didn't get a goal, didn't get assist, worked tirelessly for 90 minutes, and I was a little bit frustrated on his behalf. He made so many superb runs where the ball could have been played into him, and to be honest, I would have backed him to score. I'm talking like four or five times. Now, I don't know if the TV coverage would have caught this, because often off the ball, it's difficult to see it, but I know you could say he's drawing centre-backs away or full-backs away, and he's doing like the graft, but really, there was a couple of moments where you think, just give it to Christian, he'll score a goal. Didn't happen, but he wasn't frustrated. Credit to him, he didn't throw his arms up or get wound up, he just carried on running. Superb work ethic, and Frank Lampard did indeed 
praise him at the end in a post-match interview with Chelsea. But also, I think he said, I want to get him to score more goals. But you got to get his teammates to pass the ball to him. Anyway, I'm really, really pleased with Pulisic. We had substitute appearances from hudson Adoy and Michy Batshuayi. And Jorginho. Jorginho came on very late, didn't really do much. Batshuayi didn't really do much. When you're not really chasing a goal and you've given more time, he can be a bit of a passenger. He does run about a lot, though. But I feel like he was staying up the pitch too much when really Chelsea had a dangerous moments towards the end. And with hudson Adoy, it's going to take some time. He needs to start a few games, maybe like some cup games. I imagine he'll start against Nottingham Forest and stuff like that. Hopefully a couple of other games, but very, very talented. Just didn't get the chance to do his thing in this game particularly. Generally, I'm happy with this game. I'm happy with the performance. I said 3-1. I knew Villa would score. It could have been 3-1 quite easily with the amount of chances Chelsea had but you'd take a 2-1 all day against a team that were buoyed from a decent result at Old Trafford. And remember, Man United just beat Jose Mourinho Spurs at Old Trafford, so things are getting shaken up in the Premier League a little bit. Anyway, what do you guys think of this game? Let me know in the comments below. Are you happy? Who are you impressed with? Who are you disappointed with? Remember, do go subscribe to Yan Plays by clicking the link in the top of the description and come and support my gaming channel and laugh at me playing FIFA, Foot Champions or Chelsea Career Mode. Also, remember to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. Remember, you can join the Discord server or also on Patreon. That link's somewhere down in the description as well talk about me talk about me talk to me <laughs> about football and Chelsea in the discord server don't talk about me too much that'll be a bit weird anyway this video is getting a bit weird now so you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,